in the monitor and watch and see and witness what's going to happen to you. The time's clicking. All or dark. Big bloodbath. Ha! New York! New York, New York! They haven't seen a bloodbath in years! And the two greatest athletes are coming. New York, bloodbath, anything, you name it, Paul, it's gonna happen. Get set for the match of the year as Paul Orndorff and Steve Williams shake up the Big Apple here on the UWF Fury Hour, next! Once again, I welcome you to the Universal Wrestling Federation Fury Hour. I'm Craig DeGeorge. Great yet to have you with us again, along with Bruno San Martino, the living legend. And this is the moment of truth, Bruno San Martino. We've got the big matches we've been talking about all along. First of all, you got Bob Orton, the ace, going up against B. Brian Blair. This in itself is a grudge match. And keep in mind that you have John Polis out there. Of course, Annie's going to be here, too. She's back. But this match, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. The big feature is here, folks. It'll be Dr. Death, Steve Williams against Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff in our feature match. Greg, this is not going to be a wrestling match. This is going to be a war, I promise you. These are two individuals who hate each other. They're going to go out here tonight, and they're going to try to destroy one another. This is going to be a vicious, vicious battle. All right, Herb Abrams will be with us throughout the program, and let's go to him now for the rest of tonight's card. What a card, Craig and Bruno. The popular Steve, the Wild Thing Ray, gets the show underway. The villainous Russian bear Ivan Koloff meets up with crowd favorite David San Martino. One of tonight's great matchups, B. Brian Blair, with Lou Albano and Honey in his corner, meet the slick cowboy Bob Orton and his infamous mentor, John Tolis. The UWF debut of the man with the tan, Sonny Beach. And finally, the match we've been waiting for for months. Dr. Death, Steve Williams, in a revenge match against Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff. Lou Albano bellies up with another Captain Lou's Corner. And we'll answer another fan's letter on Ask the Wrestlers. That ring is shooting to all the news and happenings in the UWF on the UWF power line. Find out where the match is going to be in the future. Plus, hear what your favorite UWF wrestler have to say. Just dial the power line at 1-900-4204-UWF. Call now. The wild thing, yes. The wild thing, Steve Ray, this guy, he's wild. But uh, how about Cutie Pie here? Cutie Pie always provides you with some good action, so this, this ought to be an interesting match. Yeah, it should be something else. And we've got a big hour of excitement as well coming on the Universal Wrestling Federation. To say that again, this is going to be a most interesting guy. We've got some really, really super, super powerhouse matches here. So, but it's starting off with that big and exciting match. And uh, Steve, the one thing, Ray. Oh, look at him with the girls. Look at him with the New York girls. Boy, nice looking girls, too. Does he look happy or what? <laughs> yes, say, he says, hey, he says, this New York is wild. That's for me. Meanwhile, Cutie Pie saying, what's going on? Those girls ought to be coming after me. After all, I'm Cutie Pie. Listen, he is excitement personified. Well, guys, never mind the girls. You're in here to battle in that ring, and that's where you're going to show who's who here. 
wild thing here. He's still got his cap on and his uh, jacket. And, and come on, let's take it off and let's get down to serious business. And I think I think Udi Pai here, Spicoli, I think he's very upset and angry. He did not like what he saw outside that ring. He felt that that should have been him surrounded by those pretty girls. After all, as I said, he is the cutie pie. I think this is a ego battle uh, <laughs> yes. for sure. And talk about battles. We touched on it in the open. What an incredible hour coming up here in the Universal Wrestling Federation. Steve the Wild Thing Ray and the cutie pie Luis Piccoli. As we mentioned later on, we'll see B. Brian Blair and the ace cowboy Bob Orton. And of course, the big feature, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff against Dr. Death, Steve Williams. And those of you who have been along with us know the story, then we'll talk about much more later on. Right now, it's the wild thing, Steve Ray. And cutie pie, Luis Picoli. Well, so far, a lot of uh, measuring each other and a few threats here, but no real contact yet. And there, oh, cutie pie throws a tackle. It's a tackle at uh, Steve Ray, and uh, nothing happened. And now they have a little conversation. <laughs> you know, I, you know, can't knock him down. You know, cutie pie has not had much success here in the UWF, but wow. he has shown signs in almost every match of some flashes of talent. But you know, fairness to him too, he has faced some of the uh, toughest opponents as well. And he is a young guy, but one thing I've given credit for, uh oh. This is with the roundhouse right. Tried to back body drop and turns around. <laughs> he got scared into the corner. Well, that was not going to happen. There's a good point. A flying, flying close line. Close line really down. Down. Yeah. The wild, uh, the wild thing got caught with a wild close line. This with a very poor roundhouse play. Oh. Able to buckle him back off the rope. Oh. Close line over the top. Well, that's been the story of the match so far. Wow, cutie pie there, Spicoli, whatever you want to call it. That was a dumb mistake on his part to have his back turned to be talking to fans. I mean, his opponent wasn't that hurt that he could feel that confidence could turn his back to him. And as a result, he got caught with that close liner and down he went. And right now, he caught uh, the wild thing, Steve Ray here. He had a pretty good blow on those ropes, and uh, he felt it. Cutie pie, as we've talked about, is uh, again having some success. As it showed up in the wind column, but you got to feel it sooner or later he's going to win one of these. There's a good kick to the midsection, and again, Ray is floored by Cutie Pie. And this has not been a very good start for Ray, needless to say. A little kick out there, and he puts Cutie Pie right on top of the referee. That right, guy was close. That was a two and a half count, and that's too close. Oh, good point. Well, Steve, the wild thing, Ray, who's been trying to make a name for himself here. Turn around, cross body block, it's flipped back over, and two, and he's going to go. And, you know, the referee a little bit slow there in the three count. But that flying body press, and then he came with a reversal, because it could have, either way, it could have uh, wound up in a pit. Cutie by showing an assortment of tactics here against Ray. They may have started out with a lot of threats and so forth, but right now they're giving you some real good action, aren't they? Got him twisted him up on the top rope there. And look where Ray's going now. He's going to the opposite side. I don't know. Spicoli didn't look like a cutie pie dangling from that top rope. Oh, gosh, what a great move by Ray. He came flying off that, and he's going to get him. And he deserves it with that move. Boy, here he the winner, top rope. Steve Ray, the wild thing. Talk about a man in our profession that has credentials, and you have to spit the name out, name Ivan Koloff. Here's a man who wrestling historians will always refer to as the only man ever to defeat Bruno San Martino, and a man who filled emergency rooms up all over the country. Well, Ivan Koloff, you came to the UWF for a challenge, and that's exactly what you're going to get, because David San Martino may not be the biggest man in professional wrestling, but I guarantee you I'm the most fit and I'm the most dangerous if provoked. Coming up, David San Martino and Ivan Koloff next on the UWF Fury Hour.
Well, no, here comes Ivan Koloff into the ring, getting set to take on David San Martino. His introduction upcoming. As we continue here on the Fury Hour, I'm Craig DeGeorge with Bruno San Martino. Here's Koloff trying to make some kind of a statement here. Banging the canvas. That's a little intimidating, isn't it? The Fury is going to be so pony. And making his change. approach to the ring at this time. 227 pounds from the steel city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, David San Martino. Well, here's David San Martino, bro. We've talked about it over the past few weeks, the shape that he has gotten himself in. He's taken off some weight. He'll tell you he's not the biggest guy around. He'll also tell you he is one of the strongest and in the best shape of his life. And a very solid 2-2-5. Two, two, well, you know, uh, Koloff is a, a, a look. Look at that crowd, huh? Yeah, mean, as Koloff gets set, you see the big crowd is edging up on their seats and taking a look at this big matchup, and certainly looking forward to what we have in store. And stay tuned. We've got B. Brian Blair coming up against the East Cowboy Bob Orton. This has been exciting the last few weeks. I don't know if we had capacity crowds, but some big superstars in that audience. You know, very exciting audience and, and, and some just fantastic matches. Some great, great talent. But right now. Pull off here versus David San Martino. And, uh, it's, you know, this ironic, uh, Craig. I wrestled Pull off when he was a young, upcoming guy who was a bull of a man from Harvard. And now, in a sense, here he is, thank you, my son, he's a relatively youngster, you know. Yeah. And uh, so. All right, so that must mean that you passed along some kind of scouting report, if I am reading into this correctly. Well, you know. David's been around a while now, and the uh, and I really don't interfere much because he's seen uh, he's seen all the best, and he has to uh, he has to come up with his own plan, so to speak. You know, he's, he's, he's not okay. uh, six months in the business; he's been at it now for a number of years. Yes, he has. You know, so uh, and he is in with a uh, crafty veteran in uh, Kolov, no doubt about that. And of course, that chain has come into play in past weeks. Koloff knows every trick in a book. He can wrestle, he can, uh, he, he's a brawler. Uh, you make a mistake and he'll capitalize on it, he'll make you pay. Uh, David knows all that. David knows it because he's known Koloff for a long time. And uh, he knows that all he needs is to make one mistake and have to be careful. So uh, I hope he prepared uh, real well for this and uh, because he's going to need uh, everything uh, within himself. Uh, to, uh, to, to compete and, and to hopefully come out with a win over a guy like Koloff. That applies some pressure to Koloff. And that is not going to be enough against the Russian Bear. David Sabertino living out of the Atlanta area now is a personal uh, fitness trainer when he is not in the ring. Uh, Koloff just did a nice maneuver here. He gave uh, David a drop toe hold and then he moved up to his chin lock. His so chin lock too. Uh, he's got that hand around although David's trying to wiggle free. What David should do is he shouldn't so much as try to, uh, uh, you know, he should, he should be making quicker moves, make Koloff move around, confuse him a little bit, because David does have great speed. But David sometimes is the type, because he has confidence in strength and everything else, he's willing to match an opponent. Sometimes you have to use different strategy. And uh, a veteran like Koloff, uh, you know, you, you have to try something different, something new. Uh, keep him keep him confused, move around him, get behind him, you know. Move him around the ring and then come in and work quick leg dive, try to get him on the mat. He just gotta, because he's a very difficult guy to get the advantage on. I think the point you make is a good one. If you had to pick which would win a test of strength, you would think, at least looking at it, uh, Koloff would eventually wear out David. But, as you mentioned, David can surprise you with his strength, I think, Bruno. Well, David, when he was happy, and I'm talking about when he went through 50, he did do a oh! plus the final quarter. Whoa. David moved out of the way, and guess what? Koloff hit his own chain and the force of the steel turnbuckle and pipe. And it was only a matter of time, you think, Bruno, for that chain to come back and haunt Ivan Koloff, a man who has done so much damage with it here in the UWF. No doubt about it. When you're talking about Koloff, uh, you're talking about a veteran who, like I said, who knows every every trick in the book, and you make no mistakes with him. Nice and toss by David. Well, first of two, but he took the drop kick to the face, and another one returned now to Koloff, and things heating up here. There's the arm drag. 
San Martino trying to lock the arm, but he can't do it. Look at Kolov, boy. That, we're talking about veterans. All right. See, he, 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 when David the arm dragged, and David stuck his head a little forward. As soon as Kolov spotted that, he shoots up and he scissors him and takes him down. You, you can't make mistakes with people like Kolov. He's just too sharp. He just knows, you know, he knows every trick in the book. And he's got eyes in front, the side, and the back. You know. And, a lot of people, you know, don't like him. Uh, I don't certainly don't approve of some of his tactics. I despise the fact that he comes in with that chain. But don't take nothing away from him. He's, he's, a, he's as tough an individual as, as, as there is in the business. Another scissor, though, Bruno, after David managed to get out of the first one. Yeah. Well, the best thing is if you can kick out, kick out of this right now, because, you know, the way you're caught in the situation, your ears, your... Edge ranking. You shouldn't try to get out and try by kind of an old kick out if you can and, and try to get, get away and then regroup, so to speak. Okay, now in this situation, there, if he can wind up with this uh, leg, uh, leg lock. Uh, oh, but see, he turned to a hammer lock. Okay. I would have hoped he would have gone to the leg and then turned around and sit the pull offs back and really, uh, and really yanked on it. Yeah, because David is strong. Although, on the arm. Yeah, although I was going to say, you know, you work on that arm, uh, drive it up, uh, that can do some, uh, some damage. Kind of raking the front of the base of Kolov now. And knee to the back, Kolov, fairly not affected, gets stopped, takes the chop. And Martino continuing to work on Kolov, arm twist. Tries to get the back body drop on him. Back he reversed him. Hold him. Not enough. That's a lot of weight to try and hold down there. And that kind of twisted uh, angle he has on it. It was clever the way David uh, got him into that uh, back row, but it's not an easy thing to hold. If Koloff had been hurt and if he was worn down, then it might work. But, but he's not. Uh, oh, that's a way. He tights. Back down and he nearly got him. Well, not, but you know, honestly, his shoulders were up when the referee was counting. You know, that was a two count where I don't think he should have been at all. Well, up trying to get a suplex, a reversal, and both of them get free. And now Kolov hammering away at the back. Up turnbuckle. It's been a real war, you know. No spacing at all between these two guys. They've been on the top of one another, right to the right. Well, Kolov's been tough because of course we know tough. But to his credit, David has taken that uh, with him. For the younger, you know, the less experienced uh, person, I think he's uh, so far at least, he's shown Kolov that uh, he can battle with him. Now the abdominal stretch. Now, a veteran like Kolov with this, uh, I don't know now if David is going to have a, a, a much left to get out of this because this ex this excruciating hold. As I told you before, when you apply this and you apply the pressure, your side, it feels like your ribs are literally being pulled apart. Turns it into a small package and no. Can't put him away. Chop to the midsection. Don't forget, coming up, E. Brian Blair, Cowboy Bob Orton. Later on, it's the tournament future match, Dr. Death and Mr. Wonderful all coming up. Much more as well. Herb Abrams and more here on the Fury Hour. You know, we're looking forward to those matches because we know what kind of match they're going to be. But in all honesty, we've been watching some exciting matches uh, so far. Look at that move. Well, you are right about that, Bruno. This one is no exception. And Kolov with all of his weight, but somehow David again showing the resiliency to kick out. Now he's taking the big chops from Kolov. I think the last few weeks here in New York at the Panda Hotel, I think no. that the fans have had the real freak, really. They no. really seen the best of us, though. I'm just trying to size up the men in here, just that he just keeps going back and forth. It's really hard to get a gauge in this particular matchup. Both have been very impressive. Normally, you see a match go one way or the other, tilt. Not really here. No, like he has, he has been going back and forth. But once yeah. somebody gets the edge, uh oh, uh oh. because uh, some big matches have been lost <laughs> from that situation. Yeah, you really don't want to see it end like that if somebody had a disadvantage. Whoa. David knocked out. Oh, looked like he was going to get his feet down, but he was not able to do it. And now they're outside. It's always so dangerous there when you don't have that canvas to protect you should you fall. And they're trading right to left. They better pay attention to the count or there's going to be a disqualification here. They may have heard you. 
reaching back of the tights. They've been trying to get up. You can hear the count up well, to six. Yeah, but I think, the the, yeah. Yeah. I think the referee stopped the count, didn't he, Greg? He may have. Well, no, he hasn't. Oh. Here, ten. Okay, now. Body well, flipped him in, but I hear the count. He counted him out. Well, he was not inside the ring area. Well, who gets the win? Who got counted out? I, I'm confused on this one. I think he, I think we picked the winner by countdown, David Sammartino. You know what's the ironic about that? Sammartino. This Kolak suplexed Sammartino into the ring to get him in by nine, but he stayed outside the ring and he got counted out. That was the count of ten, okay. The UWF is returning to the Penta Hotel in New York City with a big surprise. That'll be on Friday night, February the 15th at 7 p.m. It's a new date, but the same great UWF wrestling returns to New York for the Rumble in the Big Apple 2. The UWF debut of the man with the tan, Sunny Beach, is next. Sunny Beach. Sunny Beach. See it. He's from California. Woo! Look at the way. Look at this guy. He's got a surfboard with him. Oh boy. Yes, he does. Surfing in the Big Apple. He is surfing. No, no, he's surfing in the ring. In the Big Apple in January. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> this guy is quite a character. Sunny Beach and Mike Williams. Mike out of uh, New Orleans. He's a pretty colorful guy himself. What you're saying is we have a lot of color in that ring, huh? Yes, a lot of color. <laughs> it's like a couple of human highlighters there, the light green and yellow. Look at that outfit. It's not even a wrestling uh, outfit, is it, Bruno? Looks more like a some kind of uh, like a beach outfit. spandex beach outfit of some sort. Yeah, or a, uh, actually, it looks like a wetsuit is what it looks like. When I see uh, movies in the 1920s, that's the kind of ba bathing suits they used to use. But let's see what kind of wrestling we're going to see here between these two. All right, they're both uh, pretty big customers. Sunny Beach. Oh. Right now, looks like a Texas hey, hey. barn dance. Right there, right there. Texas oh. barn dance, huh? Oh. 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 a couple of shots on Sunny Beach. He was known for a move called the tidal wave. Oh. 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 Wait, snap suplex. Hey, he did it. He did it with great speed. I like that. That was, that was very well executed. And a arm to the back of Sunny Beach. Right now, at least for the moment, Sunny Beach, I think this is in California with this surfing board. But that might be turned around. But there it is. What a shot right in the midsection. And he got him coming off the top rope there, so the wave might be coming in now for Sunny Beach. Yes, it is. And I think that's what he called his tidal wave suplex. Tidal wave suplex, huh? You know, a lot of these wrestling moves have been around for God knows how long. And now all of a sudden they have different names to them because the wrestlers themselves, you know, choose to give them a different name. Okay. No attention, and he puts them away just like that. The winner, Sunny Beach. Sunny Beach, and it's a sunny day for him here in his UWF debut. Captain Lou and his new crew is next. Just a few short minutes away, B. Brian Blair, and you got to step in the ring against the toughest man you've ever faced in your life. And this might be the India, boy. This might be the India. You might as well go ahead and kiss sweet honey goodbye. You're right there, man. That tarantula. <laughs> and albino and all those other guys. Let me tell you something, man. Here's our motto. A coin. And this is what we think. Heads, we win. Tails, you lose. <laughs> yes, 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 wrestling fans, it's the big old fat man, Captain Lou Albano, back again this week at the Captain's Corner with two very personal close friends of mine, B. Brian Blair and Honey Bee. Honey Bee, what are you doing here and what is your game plan? Well, Lou, I'm here strictly as an observer to watch Brian's back, but you know what you get when you grab a bee by the tail. Oh, 
yeah, you get stung, that's right. And you know something, Cowboy Bob Orton Jr., I don't know where you get off on calling yourself the cowboy because nobody around here has ever seen you on a horse. And you know something, you golden geek, John told us, you get off on running your trap a lot. And you know what happened, just like Honey said, you're gonna stick your hand in a hornet's nest one too many times. You know that, Captain? In other words, John Tolleson and Orton, the party's over, baby. You had the audacity, the mitigated goal to go out and slap this beautiful young lady. Well, this is the equalizer, brother. This is the man that can do it all. And John Tolleson, I personally will vouch you to keep an eye on you. I may not be able to beat any professional wrestler today, but let me tell you something. You're a manager, and I'm an announcer, and I'll be there to always keep an eye on you. And B. Brian Blair will handle that big halfwit, Bob Orton. Go ahead, brother. You know something, Captain Lou? It made me sick a couple weeks ago when I saw Tell John Tolis come out here and call you a has-been. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're the greatest wrestling manager that, it has, that has ever lived. In my mind, I've seen them all, Captain Lou, and I have never seen anybody coach anybody as well as you've coached people to success. Well, so thank you. I thank you. Like I said, I might be old. But let me tell you, it's like fine wine, baby. As I get old, I turn around. I don't mold, but I get better. So John told us, look out. These are the people that can do it all. We're ready. They're ready. You're ready. Ready, tell it. Go ahead, tell them, B. Brian. Oh, yeah, I'll just be there, Captain. Woo! Well, it's another dip into the mailbag for a lucky fan to win a free UWF t-shirt and cap. This week, appropriately enough, the question sent in by Andrew Bard of St. James, New York, is for Captain Lou. Andrew wants to know why the captain didn't slap Bob Orton and John Tolis after they flattened honey. Here's Captain Lou. Andrew, you sound like a sweet, beautiful lady, but I want to tell you right now, I felt so humiliated gall of those people slapping the face of that beautiful lady. I felt so upset. I was so hurt. Yes, I'll have the opportunity to slap John Tolis's face and Bob Orton. And believe you me, I'll make them pay. And let me tell you something, sweetheart. I respect the way you write letters in asking for me to do things like that because it's right. And what's right will come happen to Lou Alberto. I'll slap both their faces and then slam both of them. You're right, honey. Thank you for writing in. Captain Lou is so excited about this upcoming match, he mistook Andrew for an Andrea. Apologies to Andrew, who nevertheless is a winner. And you can be too. Just send in a question on a postcard with your name and address to your favorite UWF personality to Ask the Wrestlers, 702 Washington Street, Marina Del Rey, California, 90292. The Brian Blair Bob Orton Rumble explodes next on the Fury Hour. Bruno, we have been waiting for this one for a long time, and certainly not as much as this trio has. Craig, remember back in November the incident that led to this bad blood between Blair and the Orton Tolis team. It was several weeks after this incident in another match that Captain Lou came to Blair's rescue. Again at the hands of Orton and Tolis, which has set up this match here at the Penta. This is going to be an interesting uh, match because not only the two participants in the ring, which are both the top caliber wrestlers, but keep in mind, you have Tolis out there. Now you have Captain Albano versus Honey there too. And you know that somewhere along the line, something's going to happen. It has to. If Tolis' man gets in trouble, you know that Tolis is going to do something. The captain's out there. I know he doesn't like uh, he doesn't like Tolis because they had a little confrontation not long ago. So uh, this is going to be very, very interesting. And of course, for Honey, you really would love to see B. Brian Blair do a number on Orton after what has happened. We've detailed this over the weeks, but just to give you a capsule form there, he head-butted Honey several weeks ago, gave her a near concussion. And, of course, they both double-teamed B. Brian Blair that particular case. He told us and Well, and that's how the captain got involved, which, right. of course, he was very, very furious about the whole thing. Look at this. The referee was instructing Orton to stay away from Honey. Now, Orton was taking a look at that hot shot and is being held in the right hand of Honey. You'll see it there to the left of your screen. But meanwhile, if there's no interference from outside of the ring, if they if I say, these two are capable of having perhaps one of the best matches. And there's Tolis and uh, the captain here hollering at each other. If they stay out of it, this could be a great, great match because these are two extremely talented individuals in that ring. But you know that as soon as one of them is in trouble, especially if Orton gets in some kind of trouble, no God for Tolis. No be surprised for Honey to get involved either. You know, she has a first 
little reason to get involved here. And then hot shot, as, as you see, Orton go to that top rope. That is used to steer Cattle into a shoot. Which is a bit of an equalizer in case Atolas uh, comes after her, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now, I mean, you think of it as a factor of 1,000, 2,000-pound bowls. What kind of effect is it going to have on a guy like Tolis? I know he's a big fella. Well, well, we're just going to have to wait and see because some of it. But meanwhile, meanwhile, as we're talking about Tolis and we're talking about Captain Lou, we're talking about Ani in the ring. It's, it's a great match so far. A lot of great action, great moves. Uh, so far, nobody's getting the edge of anybody. It's, it's, it's wide even. As you see, Orton's trying to turn Blair over for the uh, Boston. Yeah, he nearly has him in that Boston Crab. Yes, let's see. Oh, not, the, not yet. He hasn't turned him completely over yet, so he hasn't got well, the proper leverage here. Well, Weston is doing damage. Uh, well, now he has. Yes, he does. But look at... Boy, oh boy, Free Brian Blair able to press out of that Boston Crab. And that, that in itself is a pretty good feat because you're in such a disadvantage when you're caught in that crab. B. Brian Blair obviously doesn't have enough left right now. He may need to get a breather, and that's going to be just about impossible with Orton all over him. Because it looked like he picked him up okay, but he couldn't slam him down. There's well, a good shot of Honey looking on. You know, that Boston Crab from a boot in his back, and probably his back was sore when he scooped up Orton. His back just gave out. Meanwhile, as Orton and B. Brian Blair are in the ring, there you see outside the ring, Albano has moved around and tell John Tolis to keep his nose out of it. And meanwhile, inside the ring, we're seeing some nice wrestling maneuvers here, amateur style right now. Let's see, Horton's behind B. Brian Blair. B. Brian Blair's trying to dump a wrist lock. Horton, he does, turns it into a hammer lock, I think. Oh, he's not trying, yet. not quite. Not quite. And I think he's getting there, right? And he got it. Oh, you read that one very well. He's oh. back of Horton. Another big D. This is a terrific matchup. Very good match. And you see Tolis looking on. I would love to see this match where Tolis stays out of it. And I, and I know if Tolis stays out of it, Captain ain't going to interfere. Anymore. And then I want to see which one of these two individuals will, will come out on top. Because these guys are so evenly matched that it'll be interesting to see who will make the fatal mistake. It'll cost them to win. But with Tolis out there, who knows what's going to happen. Don't count on Honey. You keep counting on Honey, Bruno. Now, Blair, look, Blair is front. No, he, he was going like for example, front face lock. This is a very punishing hold, this front face lock. Once applied properly, you know, to people that look at it, they can't see it. But believe me, if you're caught in it, and it's properly applied, you can feel like your neck is going to snap. Very punishing. The arm is right around that neck and chin. I would think the chin area also would be damage in that kind of maneuver. Captain Lou now calling over to you, Bruno. Well, the captain may not look very easy. He's trying to keep his eyes open because he's watching the match, but he's keeping an eye on now. Uh, on Tolis on the other side. And uh, the captain has promised to beat Brian Blair that he is going to, 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 make, to wrestle, concentrate, because he will not allow Tolis to interfere. Concentrate on the match because this match is about its concentration. Horton working on the midsection, Bruno. And a very, very good match as expected. This one as advertised. And there's Tolis who has no business whatsoever on the apron. Well, unfortunately, Bruno, he is in the side where it's very easy to get up to the ring area because the steps are right near where he is standing. And he's on that lower step right now. As Horton trying to flip back B. Brian Blair. Oh, he's right in front of now, hey, listen, you could be decapitated from that because the way Horton just hooked his legs and flung backward, Brian's uh, neck came right underneath that uh, bottom rope. And I thought you were out. about a choking maneuver. And you can see how red the back of Blair has got. His nails. He's doing the course of this match. Horton, what's he going to do here? He's been looking at that top rope. He drops right on the top rope, but he bounces back and forth to the canvas. Right. He had him up there above that rope, so. Right now, you see Orton's feeling pretty cocky because he thinks he's got to be something to control. He's taking his time. He's taking his good old time. And that might just turn out to be a mistake. Orton with a pinpoint elbow to the neck of B. Brian Blair. 
And now this is dangerous. He's got him in the corner where Tolis is. And what an elbow smash. I didn't know that. And Tolis is getting over there too. Now the referee's got to get in here. But he's worried about Orton getting back in the ring. He's got to look at him. Tolis is hammering away. Tolis has got a foot and here comes Captain Lou over to help out. Keep your eye outside the ring area. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, with that Tolis out there and the captain. Oh, did you see that? Tolis just struck uh, Brian Blair again. Where is Honey doing all this? She well, is. Are you looking at Horton? He's on that top rope. He's ready to jump well, on somebody. Watch Honey. She's making her way near Horton. She can't get up to him in time, and Horton comes crashing down. I sure did, Captain. You Captain gotta keep Lou, an eye yeah. on him. We, we caught him, Captain Lou. Not too happy about what's happening. You can't blame him. And fortunately, there were all here. He brought Blair able to find some kind of stamina somehow, Bruno. He's been taking a beating. Yes, he now, has. Both Tolis and Orton here. <laughs> Did you see that? Right on the nose. He came with a short. Right, right on Brian's uh, nose. Just trying to muster some kind of an attack. Uh, right now, the tank is almost empty. It's hard to hit the gas pedal, isn't it? Right now, a lot of steam has gone out of Brian Blair, so I hope that he can somehow uh, find some energy someplace here to, to come back on. And, uh oh, and here he comes. Whoa, what a shot. Look where he threw it right into the sidewalk. The captain thought, hey, if, if uh, Tolis can't do it, so can I. He reaches out from the top of the room, and this place is jumping. As is uh, Cowboy Ball. And he got him in the eyes there as well. And a uh, big right hand spins around. Another one spinning him around. And down goes the Cowboy. Up for the cover. Here goes Blair. Oh. He put him right out of the ref. He hit him right out to Jesse Hernandez, Bruno. Well, Je Jesse's feeling it, too. I mean, he took a pretty good blow here, but he's up. He's, got to, he's all right now. But, <laughs> I say he's all right now, but don't worry. He's got some cobwebs here. But here comes the Scorpion. He's trying to get it. He's trying to, Bruno. Off the grab. Figure four combination. Look out. There's Tolos. 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 He gets Tolos out. He's got a shoe out. And he hits him in the back. Tolos took that shoe off. I was wondering why he's wearing shoes with a baseball cap and a sweatshirt. Now he put Tony put Hork right on top of people. Right I hear it's Captain. He reverses it. He reverses it. And Tolis coming and he throws B. Brian Blair out of the way. Well, wow, this is just well, the, the, bedlam here, breaking loose. I'd say there's so much going on on the outside. Now let's see what these guys are going to do because they're both practically out on their feet. Uh, Here's Horton now. He, Captain oh. Lou, you know, they used to battle some years ago. Tolis and Captain Lou. And Captain Lou says, quite frankly, he can't take anybody anymore in the UWF. He certainly can handle But Tullis. look at this. Look at this. Horton's going for a superplex from that top rope. Now look, look at this. There's a good shot of that as he's getting set but for that. Meanwhile, Tolis is in the ring. Referee Jesse Hernandez, you got a feel for him here. He has that eyes all over his head. We'll follow everybody. And oh, she got him. Honey came in and got that hot shot. It's stung by the floor. And then he's shooting out. He kicks out, but he caught uh, he got the referee Hernandez right in the back of the head. There. Hernandez is hurt. Hernandez is hurt right now. They're trying to revive him there. Orton now. Look at Orton. He's got that uh, weapon there. Got something in his hand. He does, yes. Goes down to the canvas. And Some the, kind, I didn't see what it was. Those, but, uh, they might look like brass, brass knuckles, knuckles. Tape, tape with something. And, and here's, uh, uh oh, B. Brian Bear's got the box now. Oh, now there's the bell. Look out, Orton's sliding out our way. Tolis is obviously rocked with the brass knuckles. Oh, uh, hey, see what's happening here? No. No, he, he's raising 
the hands of Torres and Orton? Yes, yes, because you see what happened once well, he was Orton. Oh, disqualifies B. Brian Blair, the winner, Cowboy Bob Orton. Get set for the match of the year between Dr. Death and Mr. Wonderful. The clock's ticking. Time's about up. Paul Orndorff, it's like me walking down the beach. You're going to be out there playing with the sand castles, and I'm going to bury you and start kicking sand in your face. Well, you got my attention. You had it a long time ago, and you wanted to break every rule there was to get it. Well, let me tell you something. I can break rules better than the best of them, my friend. I'm the one that entered, that made up the name Rule Breaker. I know how to use chairs. I know how to use tables. I know how to use the cave from a little old lady out there. I can do it all in the ring. So when you and I step in the ring, don't expect no nice guy, and don't expect me to make any more mistakes. He's coming right in the ring, too, but he's not going to waste any time. Dr. Death going to work right away. Orndorff trying to get situated, can't do it. He thought he was going to surprise Dr. Death, but the veteran turned around and got a couple of good boots in early on. Orndorff, now he gets an elbow in. I have not seen him in all the years I have known him. This determined, have you grown up? There's no question about it. Like I said, you're not going to see a wrestling match here. You're going to see fists and boots and everything flying here because these guys have been waiting for this. And, and like I said, there's an awful lot of this. This is going to be just a brutal, brutal battle. Paul Orndorff has wanted this return match for a long time, and so has Dr. Death, who says he is the toughest of all in wrestling. And uh, this will be a good battle to see if he is just that. Right now, uh, 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 both oh. lines of outside the ring, but both of them go outside the ring. And he's got him down, and he's hammering away at that head. A couple of boots by Mr. Wonderful. I think this match is going just about as we predicted, Craig. I mean, they can <laughs> yeah. Orndorff can fly in and in. Oh! Oh! In the steel pipe, Bruno. And that will not give all oh, again. And Dr. Death may be cut open there. Well, the way he hit that uh, steel, uh, yeah. steel there, and, I mean, he hit flush with his head, so I, he's got a, uh, a, a piece of pride. Well, well, let's see. Let's see. Not exactly I smooth either, Bruno. And he picked, what does he have in his hand? He just hit him with something. Looks like a, an umbrella. Well, I thought the And now that we got a, we got a bell. I he thought, hit him with an umbrella. Yeah, but I thought if that umbrella could do anything as to what that steel like. Oh, can I see what I saw? He ran him in the head. That's what you saw. Looks like Williams is as we as we thought. Was he cut open? I believe I I, I can't say I just had a clear shot, but I think he split he split open. Oh, right out to the oh, one team wow, we're on lick out because they are very close to us. Williams is cut open. There's blood flying all over the place. It's stripping down. He's taking a shot after shot, hammering away. Look at that face. And Orndorff has just cut open Dr. Death, who looks every bit like he sounds at this point. Dr. Death is bleeding. If you look at that, he's got blood all over him. He's got blood in his head, his uh, shoulder. Here comes Orndorff. Continues to hammer away there. Landing shot after shot at Dr. Death, and it had to be, Bruno, that shot to the steel pipe. The umbrella may have done a little Icing of the cake damage. There's a shot of look, that. Yeah, look look at his head. Look at his forehead. But it had to be that shot to the steel <laughs> pipe. And of course for Orndorff, he went through the very same thing in their last meeting when he took the chair out of the head. So if you're thinking Paul's gone out of line, well, you may have a short memory. Well, and people are backing up here. That blood is just flying all over the place, and Orndorff has been relentless. If this was a boxing match, they would have stopped it about 10 minutes ago. Well, Dr. Death is trying to get away, but he's still well, he hanging just, in if he can. He just got Orndorff with a kick. Orndorff's coming right back, but Orndorff's going to feel a little satisfaction when he's for all the he's killed. Then he got Pearl Harbor by uh, uh, Steve Williams. So a little revenge there, but the big revenge comes as to who's going to uh, come on top of this one. Uh, now there's blood all over the turnbuckle, Bruno. And all over the ring canvas. Hey, 
Dr. Death, boy, trying to hang in there, and he just landed a good shot on Orndorff and took him down. He took him down, but uh, the, the way he did it, he, he, Orndorff was hurt because he dropped right in the back of the head. When you saw the way uh, uh, Williams pulled those brakes and he lifted Orndorff, his, oh, actually, actually Orndorff was kicking his own feet. Yeah. And uh, he could not right the back of his head. And he, he rocked him. Hurt. He rocked him. You are right. And he's landing another right. Gets the lead out of the head of Paul Orndorff. Mr. Yeah. Wonderful's head is going back. And here comes Williams. Here comes Williams. Boom. I don't know how Dr. Death is doing it. Obviously, he's going to lose some strength there. And plus, he's having trouble seeing with all that blood around his eyes. Well, uh, believe me, uh, he may be having a hard time seeing because he does have a lot of blood, but I'll tell you, well, right now, or, 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 well, look, Orndorff is hurt, too, and frankly, I'm surprised that Williams right now, even if he is bleeding badly, he isn't picking up on strength and coming after Orndorff seen him that he's hurt. Headbutt. Williams lands a head to the side, and it'll be very easy to see where that landed because there's blood now all over the side of Orndorff from the head of Steve Williams. Craig and Bruno, we run out of time on the Fury Hour. We'll have the conclusion of this titanic struggle in two weeks. UWF, the Universal Wrestling Federation, the pinnacle in sports programming.